Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Welcome to this devlog where I'm going to review all of the changes we made to our app called Listed, which is an app that will allow users to create, share, and watch lists of YouTube channels. So in today's episode, we first upgraded our AuthJS dependency. So we upgraded from 0.5.0 .0 to 0.5.1. But that brought some really nice changes because before we were overriding some types and we had to import from this really weird location. But now with the latest version, uh, they fixed it so that we can just override and import from auth core types. Similarly, you could see that we had a to do in our code base that we got to get rid of. So we're now importing from auth core types. Everything else works just fine. So that was a good update. Also, we upgraded Skeleton to version one. So uh, they officially released version one. And this was actually a very simple upgrade because we had recently upgraded to 0 0.132.5, which was release candidate. And so we fixed all the breaking changes then. And now that we're in version one, we actually didn't have any breaking changes, but we took a look through the getting started docs and we did notice we did something slightly different than the docs. So we changed that up. So uh, in this case, we're importing all.css after the theme instead of before and uh, we also were able to remove this fix so uh, skeleton got updated and and this fix was to change the styling of the, the light switch but we don't need to do that anymore uh, the other thing is when I was looking through uh, the documentation on how forms work with skeleton it actually did mention that forms need to be required before the skeleton plugin. So now in our Tailwind config, we're bringing in the forms plugin first. And also we fixed our type check. So I did not realize this, but before we did not have any type checking uh, for CI and for our, our commit hooks on Svelte files. So uh, before we were just running TSC or the TypeScript compiler directly. But what we found out is if we actually run the uh, check command, which look, exists in our package.json. So this comes generated with any skeleton, or sorry, with any Svelte kit app. If you look in the package.json, um, it has this check command, which we actually need to run. So we changed type check to run check, and then it started catching errors that, that we then needed to fix. Uh, so we had to change that to make sure that it's running that. The one issue is right now, there's no way to run this command, Svelte check, uh, for individual files, there's actually an open issue for that. So we'll have to uh, update that eventually and remove that to do whenever they fix that. But now our Svelte files are being type checked as well, which is good. Uh, we also added this change to the prettier config, bracket same line. Um, there was some some weird formatting where the greater than sign for uh, a, an HTML tag would like be on the next line. This makes it on the same line, which which we prefer. And um, also there was a typo in our code. Uh, so visibility was spelled wrong in our Charisma schema. So we caught that during development today and uh, we, we were able to, to change that. Uh, and then finally, we started working on some actual features. So uh, the feature we worked on today was being able to create a new list. So now after you're logged in, you get uh, dropped on this page that says click create to get started. You can click on create, you can give your list a title. So for instance, if you want to make a, a list of cooking channels, you can do this, add a description, set the visibility and then click create. Uh, but we also did some server side uh, validation. So first of all, if you try clicking create, it just uses the browser's required attribute to do the form validation. Um, but we also have a validation that doesn't allow empty. So if I put a bunch of spaces in here and then click create, we actually get this server, sorry, we get this error from the server side. So the server side does validation before putting it in the database and it notices that uh, those were spaces. So this error is actually being returned from the server. Um, the other cool thing is that this dropdown comes from the enum that we defined in our Prisma schema. So uh, Prisma generates the TypeScript types and so we can actually use that dropdown here. We're also doing some fancy stuff where uh, these values will actually be translated whenever you're, you load the page under a different language. So yeah, it has internationalization. So we're, we're doing a lot of stuff here. Let, let me kind of break down what's happening in the code. So on the create page, you can see we have this little if block here. If there was a form error, we're going to show those errors. So that's actually where this is coming from. In a second, I'll show you the server side code that set that error. Um, otherwise, we just have the form itself. And you can see we're bringing in all of the labels from the internationalization library. So all of these will be translated depending on what you load the page as. And here is how we do the translation uh, for 
uh, the drop down enum. So uh, we can we can use the enum itself, which we're passing down from the server side. So I can do what the default value is visibility dot. And in this case, I'm defaulting to unlisted. And then um, visibilities get passed down from the server side, which is the all of the possible visibilities. And the value is the value as it will exist in the database. So this will actually be public, private, or unlisted. But the display value is the thing that needs to be internationalized or needs to be translated. So uh, within our, our translation, we actually will be able to pass that value in and render out the translated value. So if we look in our translations, you can see in our English translations, we now have a property called enums. We're specifying visibility, and then we have the default English translations. But we also wanted type safety for this because if we were to ever go into our Prisma schema, and change visibility or add another option for visibility, we want our translations to yell at us. We want, it, we want them to say, hey, you're missing whichever one. So we got that working by creating this visibility translation type, which basically says that every key in visibility, which is the type union generated by the Prisma client, uh, every one of those should exist in here. So if we don't specify private, then TypeScript's going to yell at us because it's like, hey, you did not provide a translation for that. But now that we do that, these are the English translations. And uh, if, for instance, you wanted to translate this into Italian, you could go in here, you could specify this, and then you don't have to do all of this because it's receiving the type from the, the base translation. But then you can add all of the Italian translations like, like this. And uh, now if this page were rendered in Italian, it would actually show the translated string instead. So we're, we're pretty happy with the fact that we got enums with translation uh, working. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing I'll mention is we also did some reorganizing of our translated strings. So if you take a look in the English example, you can see that things have been moved around. So we now have a section called buttons where we're putting all of our button text and a section called labels where we're putting our labels. And these are potentially labels or buttons that are in multiple places in the app. And then for specific pages, we now have a top level pages object. And then each page has any of its specific translation properties. Now, we thought a lot about this. We had a lot of discussion on where, where stuff should go. I think I like this. I think I like where we're headed with this. And we're potentially getting to a point where we're not going to have everything in this TypeScript file. We're actually going to import it from like JSON files so that non-technical people can add translations and stuff like that. But I, I think we've, we've settled on a good format that, that's, that's working for us. Uh, the other thing is we have errors that are translated as well. So if uh, there's a, I guess, for example, the errors that show up on this page um, actually come from translation. So title cannot be empty and description cannot be empty. We're setting those using the translated string. So you'll also get translated error messages whenever it's loaded in a, in a different language as well. So yeah, if you look at this file, you'll see how we organize, reorganize things. But basically anywhere we're accessing a translation, we're now using this new, this new structure. So this is the client side page of the form. When the form gets submitted, it sends a post request to the backend and that is handled by the page.server file that sits right next to this felt file. So this felt file is the form. And then when, when we click submit, it does a post request, which gets handled over here. So in Svelte, this is a concept called actions, and we've defined our default action. So this code is going to run when we receive a post request from this specific page. Um, you can see this is where we're doing the translation because on the server side, we needed to get access to those errors to, to pass into our, our Zod validator. So that way, if Zod throws a validation error, it's giving us back the specific translated messages. So um, we get that LL object. We set the locale to be the locale of the, the page request. And then we create our validator, which is validating that we have a title, a description, and visibility. We grab the form data and then we pass it into the validator. And then after validating that, uh, we put it into the database. So this route is protected. Um, so we can assume that this user object on the session exists because you can only ever make a post request here if you're actually logged in. And so we use the user ID of the logged in user when inserting into the database. Um, and so that creates the list. So if it was successful, we return an object with success true and the list ID. Uh, if there was an error, we check to see if it's a Zod error. If it's a Zod error, we go through and grab all of those uh, error messages. 
and then we use this fail function. So fail is a built into SvelteKit, and that's what allows us to actually send some data back to the form to be displayed. So you can see here that we're sending back an object with an error property, and that's how we get access to it right here. So that error property uh, is specifically set by our backend code if there was an error, and then we display it inside of an alert. Now, if it was successful, we return this object, but we actually handle the redirect on the client side. So a post request comes to this backend action. We then return this info. And then when the page re-renders, we're checking to see if form.success was true. And so uh, if it's true, then once the page is loaded inside of the web browser, we're going to redirect to the actual page for that list itself. Uh, and now let's see it in action. So if we don't have an error, so let's say I create a list for cooking, all my favorite cooking channels, I can set the visibility and then click create. We get redirected. So it, it sent it to the back end, validated it, put it into the database, responded, and then the browser, well, once the page loaded, did the redirect to this specific list page. And there we go. We have a list inside of our database. Uh, so Today was uh, really just looking into and learning more about uh, form actions and then also kind of determining how, how we're going to do localization with errors and enums and all of the things you don't think about that need to be translated. So it was, it was, it was nice to figure that out as well. Oh, and, and I didn't show this. So this is what, what loads before the form itself loads. So if we go back to the home page. The fact that we have this drop down, that's getting loaded on the server side. So before the form page loads, we pass down the visibility enum that has public, unlisted, and private. And then we also pass down an array of those visibilities. And that's actually what we're iterating over to show those options. So all of that's passed down from the server because this is technically an enum that exists in our database. And so if we ever add new ones, our client code doesn't have to change. This will automatically pass down those visibilities from the database, um, and that's how they get rendered out here. So that's list creation. Uh, the other thing we did is on the home page itself, we're now listing out all of uh, the lists that you have created. So we can see on the home page, we have some logic. So if there are no lists, then we actually show that message that says click here to get started. Uh, but if there are lists, then we don't show that message at all. We just show the create button. And then below that, we iterate over all of the lists. Uh, and for each one, we show the title, the description, and then a link to that specific list. So if I click this, it takes me to the page. Uh, you'll notice there's no actual YouTube API integration yet. We're going to do that next time. But so far, we have creating lists. And now, whenever you're creating a list next time, we're going to add the ability to actually add channels to this list. So for the individual list page, this is just another route that queries the database. So uh, if you look in uh, here, so it's not under protected because these lists will potentially be public that even non-logged in users can look at. You can see in the Svelte file, we're just rendering out the title and the description, and that comes from our page data, which actually has that list. So if you look at page.server, we're actually querying the database. So uh, when the page loads, we're looking up that list in the database by ID. And if we found it, we're returning it so that the client side can render it. Um, if there was any sort of exception, potentially the, an exception will be thrown if the ID is not in a, a, a GUID or a GUID format. So that would throw an exception. Um, but if that's the case, then we're going to take you to the not found page. And this is another scenario where we're doing some translation because we actually want the not found message to be in the user's native language. So we're setting the locale before rendering that, that 404 page. Um, and so that works just like this. So if I specify something that's not found, it takes us to the 404 page with the not found message. And that was it for today. We were actually extremely productive, so we got a lot done. Uh, we didn't get to the YouTube API yet, but we're, we're ready for it. So next time, this create page is going to be updated, so that way we can actually add channels to it. And then we can start working on the feed where we pull in those channels and videos and everything else. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful or any of my other content useful, please consider supporting me. Uh, I'm supported by viewers like you. So if you go to coding.garden slash support, you can view all of the ways of supporting me. Um, and until next time, thanks for tuning in. I'm live right now on Twitch, twitch.tv slash coding garden. And we're working on this same app every Friday. So hope to see you in the chat. Have a good one.